The Lord be with you. And also with you. It is good for us to be here this morning, there we go, um, and to gather in God's house for a time of worship and prayer, especially during this Advent season as we await the coming of our Christ child and, of course, his second coming. Um, in the meantime, we, we grow in faith and we live that faith and we serve in that faith. And before we get into that service portion, Jack has a very important message on behalf of the Elders Initiative. Good morning, everyone. Just an update on the You Are Invited campaign. The uh, billboard went live last Monday, uh, early, early Monday morning. Um, people have noticed the billboard. We've had 17 visits to the website, one download, and one phone call to the office here, which the pastor took. Part of that campaign, we've got 250 gifts wrapped, ready, ready to be distributed. We are meeting here at the church 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon to canvas the neighborhood that is to the east and north of this church, so out in that community. If you cannot make it on the Friday and you'd like to distribute some, there will be this map in the church office and just highlight what street you've done, okay, so we don't double our efforts in that same area. Please pray for this uh, outreach. Please pray that it brings hope to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Just a couple other items just in your bulletin. I know you have the, uh, you can take it and read it later, but I'm just going to highlight for you just again to the, those who serve on the Board of Elders with a meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m., as well as a council uh, gathering on the set at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. And of course, always Wednesday evening, we've been having or began our midweek Advent service on the theme of prepare ye by pondering, by praying, and by proclaiming. So hopefully you can come out for those as well. Other than that, I do also want to mention here and say uh, praise God for our uh, new slate of elected officers from last Sunday. The names are all printed on an insert within your bulletin, and I'd ask that you take that home and maybe put it on your fridge door as a reminder that in your prayers through the week that you would pray for these people, pray for these faithful servants as they begin the tasks that have been given to them. Um... Other than that, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say regarding the bulletin. I do want to draw now your thoughts, though, to the order of service. Again, it's been printed for you. For those who are at home, I believe it was emailed to those who have email addresses. Um, but our service for the second Sunday in Advent has basically everything within, including the hymns. And I would just encourage you to please follow along to the, um, as we proceed. We begin, though, our time of worship in our faithful God's name with the singing of him, Hark the Glad Sound, hymn 349. We stand as we sing. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. At this time, of, as we prepare for our time of service, I ask you to please kneel and be seated for the confession of absolution. Prepare the way of the Lord. Recalling our baptism into Christ, we confess our sins to God in the full assurance of the gift of forgiveness by the mighty sacrifice of his Son. O oh God, from the wilderness of lives disfigured and crushed by the devil, our own sin and the sins of others, we cry out to you for the forgiveness of our sins, those that trouble us as well as those of which we are not aware. Restore the light and the grace by your own command, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We rise. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Let your light sh scatter the darkness and illumine your church. The second candle to be lit on the wreath this morning is known as the candle of peace. This candle reminds us that Jesus came to bring us spiritual peace, and he is known as the Prince of Peace. We sing stanza one and two of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thank mm -hmm. That by his coming we may be enabled to 
should serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings of the Holy Scripture. lesson for the second Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, can be found in the printed order of service. This reading begins with the words, comfort, comfort, and then points to the voice of the desert, announcing the good news of the coming of one who will be like a shepherd caring for his flock. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has re received from the Lord's, from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice cries, in due wilderness prepare the word of, of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain shall tell, shall and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty, all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up in the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and heaven's salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The epistle reading is taken from 2 Peter, the third chapter can be found in the order of service. When the Bible says Jesus is coming soon, we have to remember that God's time schedule is different from ours. He will come in his own time and things will change radically. Recognizing that we live temporary, lives in a temporary world, surely should influence the way we live day by day. The word of the Lord from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, 
as some cannot as counsel on us, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise as we speak the words of the Alleluia verse. Alleluia! Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday in Advent is from Mark's Gospel, the first chapter. And you will be able to find it, of course, in your service folder. Now, it is generally thought that Mark recorded Peter's eyewitness testimony. Mark's Gospel stresses action and tells of the ministry of John the Baptist, God's Advent voice in the desert, in seven brief verses. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the singing of our next hymn, hymn 344. Thank <laughs> you.
Christ's mercy and peace be unto you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated at this time. The text for our meditation this morning is from the Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11, which you've already heard. The title, um, as I put it up there, is a good title, but it's not the appropriate title. I sent the wrong one. It is a voice of preparation is our theme and our title, and, and so we will reflect upon that. I want to read just a few of those verses once again as we get started. From Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a, boat, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is our text. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious Father, guide your word again this day. As we hear it, with our ears, and receive it in our hearts. Help us, O Lord, to be the people you have called us to be, a people of faith, a people of grace. And enable us, O Lord, to always be seeking for opportunities to let others know of your great love. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. You know, those words by themselves may not sound very impressive to you, but I'm going to guess that those words that I just spoke have greatly impacted your life. Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. You know, it's not so much the words themselves that have impacted your life, but it's the way in which those words were spoken on March the 10th, 1876. I think you already know who I may be talking about. There was an inventor by the name of Alexander Graham Bell who spoke into a voice transmitter. Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. And just down the hallway in another room was Mr. Thomas Watson, his assistant, who heard those words. And those, dear friends, were the first words spoken by telephone communication. Now this Advent and Christmas season, you may give or even receive the gift of one of Alexander Graham Bell's voice transmitters. And they've changed a lot, though, of course, since 1876. You can talk to people on the other side of the world. You can watch movies. You can look up sports scores. You can find and navigate directions. But today and long before Alexander Graham Bell gave us the gift of a voice transmitter, God gave the gift of a voice. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. He gives us the gift of a voice of comfort, and he gives us the gift of a voice to comfort. Listen again to those words of Isaiah 40 as we read just the first couple of verses. And I'm just going to read it again from our service holder. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. You know, those words that Alexander Graham Bell spoke were impressive, but those words that God speaks and that God commands to be spoken are impressive just by themselves. He says, comfort, comfort my people, so says your God. You know, the very mention of comfort implies that there must be a need for comfort. 
The double mention of comfort implies that there is a double need for comfort. And so I ask you, with your own life, do you have a double need of God's comfort? Do you have burdens that are just too big for your own shoulders to carry? Do you have tears that the world's Kleenex cannot dry? Do you have problems in your life that pretty, that pretty presence under the tree and nostalgic Christmas carols cannot alleviate? Well, so did the people of Jerusalem. If you and I would read the chapter just before our text, and we're not going to do that today, but if you were to read chapter 39, Isaiah leaves us on a cliffhanger. And you're left wondering what's going to happen next. What he did was he announced to the people of Judah and Jerusalem, God's people, that Jerusalem was going to be ransacked and that the people were going to be carried away in exile into Babylon. Now you might say, well, why would this possibly happen? What did those people do or not do? Well, a big motif in the first 39 chapters of Isaiah is really a message of rebuke. The people had turned their backs on God, on the Holy One of Israel. And if you really want some somber words to look at, go to chapter 5 in particular. And as you read the words of chapter 5, it kind of has you looking into yourself and our own nation today and leads us to admit hey, that sounds an awful lot like us. You know, one of the things that God said is, woe to those who call good evil and evil good, and to those who put darkness for light and light for darkness. You see, the people of Jerusalem and Judah had a problem with morality. They were skewing the lines of what's good and what's evil. And that was only the start. In chapter 5, God goes out and he says, Woe to those who are wise in their own sight and clever in their own eyes. What God is referring to is that these people were so high up on those mountains of pride that they thought they had life all figured out. They thought they had everything that they could possibly need right there. And of course, that meant no room for God. But pretty soon, those mountains of pride would topple down into the valleys of despair as God would bring punishment upon them through Babylon. That, my friends, is chapter 39. So you wonder what's going to happen next. Well, in chapter 40, God doesn't leave us hanging. He says, comfort, comfort my people, so says your God. And then in verse 2, it explains why the people could be comforted. He says, tell her, speak to her, speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. When you stop and you think about those words for a moment, those are truly words of great comfort. It's a message of comfort. The people were told by Isaiah that in the future there would be comfort, and here's why. They would return from exile and be released from captivity. And all those sins that sent you into captivity, the Lord will forgive them, wash them away. And you will receive abundant blessings from the Lord's hand. That is what the Lord, the people needed to hear. But if you look at verse 2 again, it also explains that you and I could be comforted. You know, it's very clear that when you read verse 2 in the rest of Isaiah, that Isaiah is not just talking about comfort for those people of Jerusalem. And he doesn't just have those released from prison and captivity from Babylon in his mind. No, Isaiah's prophecy goes much, much further into the future. And it looks at and it sees a manger 
and it sees this young virgin girl who is holding a child we call Emmanuel, God with us. And then that beautiful chapter, chapter 53 of Isaiah, it tells of the prophet again, looking into the future with undeserved eyes, that the Savior would be pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment on him brings us peace. Isaiah's prophecy speaks so tenderly to our brittle hearts, saying, your sin has been paid for by Jesus, that you will receive from the Lord double for your sins. Grace upon grace upon grace. So dear friends, the gift that God is giving to you is a voice like Isaiah's. It is a beautiful voice of gospel comfort. This is the kind of gift that doesn't break, it doesn't wear out, it doesn't fade away. In fact, it gets better with the passing of time because it is a gift that lasts into eternity. So God's gift to you is a voice. It's a voice like Isaiah's. It is a voice of comfort. But we need to remember that God is only warming up because what Isaiah does next is he whisks us away into the wilderness to hear another voice. We go to verses 3 through 5. And it reads, A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, do you recognize the sound of that voice mentioned in those three verses? Well, let's go back to Mark chapter 1, which we have heard earlier this morning. We read from Mark's gospel these very words of Isaiah, who very bluntly said, And so John came that John the Baptist would be crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. Now I have to admit something to you. I personally, at least right away, don't connect John the Baptist with comfort. There is a lot of what John says and what John does that makes me very uncomfortable. You've all seen television preachers, haven't you? Well, do they dress like John dresses? Do they look like John? Do they eat like John? Do they preach like John? Think about it. His wardrobe was camel's hair with a leather belt. Not exactly a fashion statement. And his diet was this wonderful mixture of locusts and wild honey. Yum. And his preaching location was in the middle of a desert. You know, I don't know about you, I'm just uncomfortable thinking about this. I'm uncomfortable watching him eat those hopping insects. But what makes me most uncomfortable is I listen to John preach. And one of the big things John preached was repentance. The very word repent implies that there is a need to repent. And you and I may think, well, what is he saying about me? Do I need to repent? Again, I don't know about you, but I don't think that we as a people like to hear much about sin. We want to hear about how good we are, not how bad we are. We want an upbeat sermon. We want to be told all the things we can do to make ourselves and our lives better, to make ourselves better people. We don't want to be told that there's nothing we can do to make to be better in the eyes of God because we are sinful. And yet here is John. And I think that as uncomfortable as it is in the comforting thing, is the comforting thing about John is that he levels with us in the truth. John actually levels us with truth. He doesn't tell us what we want to hear. John does paint, uh, doesn't paint this Northern Rockwell perfect kind of life. He talks about life as it really is, and this life has a huge problem. And that huge problem is sin. 
Sin has so ravaged the landscape of the human heart that there are these mountains of pride and these valleys of despair. Sin has so ravaged our hearts that there are these crooked and rugged thoughts of, of, of ours and the words that we speak and, and the things that we do. Our hearts are so damaged by sin that we think that it is a quick fix that will take care of the problem. That we just need a feel-good sermon. That we just need an upbeat message. That we just need a to-do list and we will get everything straight built. But you notice John doesn't give us that. John levels with us in the truth because he's preparing the way for God's grace. And John speaks real words to real sinners because he has a real message of comfort to share. And what I love about John is he never had to be told to keep Christ a part of Christmas. The way he dresses, the food that he eats, the places he preaches, even the message he shares, it strips away all those distractions and, and focuses and identifies the problem that we have and the solution that God gives. So what John does is he grabs those of us who are proud, high up on those mountains of pride, and he bangs us down low to look in the manger to see the one who died for our sin. John lifts up those who are lowly and despairing, and he picks us up to be washed in the grace of, that God gives to us in holy baptism. Remember, we often call him John the Baptizer. John straightens out our priorities. He clears away the distractions so that this Christmas and each day and each week we hear the tender message of comfort. This is John. So God gives you the gift of a voice this Advent and Christmas. And it's not just Isaiah's, but it's John's as well. To comfort us, his people. But then we go on to verse 6 in the following. This will be getting towards the end. And, and God also gives us a voice to comfort. And I want to emphasize that, a voice to comfort others, we read. A voice says, cry, and I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who, that are there with, with young. You know, when you look back on verse 6, do you recognize the sound of that voice? Is that Isaiah's voice? Well, certainly it is. But let me ask you this question. Have you ever asked that question, what shall I cry out? So you have a friend, you have a family member that's in the hospital, and you were in the car driving, and now you are in the elevator riding up to the floor that they are on, and now you're walking down the hall to the way, to the room that they are in, and you think to yourself, oh man, what do I say? What shall I cry out? Have you ever been in a conversation with someone that all of a sudden makes a turn toward religion? And now you have this open door, this invitation to share the hope that you have, and you are just about ready to say something, but inside of you you're thinking, oh man, what do I say? What shall I cry out? Have you ever found someone who was down in the dumps or maybe someone who was drifting away from the Lord and you're thinking, what do I say to this person? What shall I cry out? You see, the voice, this voice, is also our voice. That those who have been comforted by God might use our voices to now comfort others. If you go back to the first two words of our text, comfort, comfort my people, those words carry the meaning that God doesn't have just one person in mind to do the comforting. He has a lot of people in mind. He has the prophets, 
He has the apostles. He has the pastors and teachers. But even more importantly, he has you. He has the laity. He has the people in mind. That those of us who have been comforted by God are the ones who share comfort with others. And God doesn't leave us hanging with what to say. You know, we often are, so often we are asking ourselves, well, what do I say in this situation? Or what about that situation? Well, believe it or not, God has put together a book that gives you exactly what you need to say in any and every situation. And i got to tell you, it's a pretty good book, too. Of course, you know what I'm talking about, right? The Bible. And God has given us this enduring message to share, and he says, share it. You know, all around us, we have these reminders of things that, that don't endure. Flowers bloom and they fade, the grass grows and then it dies. And those things are reminders of our own mortality, that we soon, too, start to fade out after a while. You know, the doctor visits start to happen a little bit more. We start to pick up a few more prescriptions than ever before. And so in a world that has dying flowers and dying grass and hillsides covered with cemeteries, God says this, you have the message that never dies. You have this message that endures. So share it. Pass it on. And so we preach the repentance of John and we preach the comfort of Isaiah. We are able to say to people who are fearful and hurting, here is your God. Look, he's in that manger. He is God with us, Emmanuel. He comes to us in great power, but he also comes to us in the gentleness of a tender shepherd. Dear friends, Jesus is both almighty, powerful God, and yet at the same time, he is that loving shepherd holding us in his arms. So, Comfort. Comfort, my people, says our God. Use the voice he's given to you to share the beautiful words of comfort and hope that we have in Christ with others. To God be all the glory. Amen. Let us rise. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds firmly in faith, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us now take this opportunity to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks this day for calling us and the whole world to repentance and faith by your holy prophets, by your servant John the Baptist, and by your own Son, whose spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens everyone through his many words and sacraments. Grant that we and all who hear his voice remain faithful in the fellowship of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Continue to give your blessing, power, and grace to your church, especially all pastors and servants, whom you have called and given to guard, lead, and teach your flock. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give stability to our country, O Lord, supplying all who make, administer, and judge our laws with wisdom and good will toward all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless the schools of the church and all centers of learning and research, that those who teach would serve you honorably and that our common life be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Heavenly Father, extend your grace upon all those recognizing birthdays this week, including Carolyn, Alec, Jamie, Shannon, Hannah, and we also remember Kelsey, whose birthday was this past week. And we pray, Lord, that their joy would be full and that their love would always, always be rooted in your love for them. And keep the families of this congregation under your care, especially during this pandemic. Keep them safe, strengthen their faith, and equip them with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And by your word and spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Especially do we remember and lift up to you, Lord, Fred and Liz, as Fred continues his recovery from surgery at home. For Cheryl, during her recovery, that her healing would be full. For Keith and for Alice, as Keith recovers from his procedure this week. For Elsie, as she undergoes treatment during this time for her health concerns. We pray as well for Bill and Vicki, for Maria, Patricia, Sandra. Dennis and Sarah, Doreen, Grace, Nancy, Marsha, Mark and Elsie, Maria, Kathleen, Harry, Al and Ken, especially during Al's worsening health concerns. For Shirley, for Mark, for Frank, for Sarah, for Renner, for Marianne, for Jean, for Christina, for Stacy, for Albert, for Becky and Anna, and also for all those impacted by COVID. 19, including the frontline workers, as well as those who are afflicted. And Lord, be with those who are preparing for surgery, that you would guide the hands of the surgeons and the well being and the skills of the medical staff watching over them. Also, Lord, hear us as we now name those others that are in our hearts this day. Support all those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on, on those to whom death draws near. And give your tender care to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering those who have loved and served you, who now rest from their labors, we give you thanks. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commit all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together, O Lord, we remember to pray that prayer you have taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude our service with the singing of hymn 352.
proper distancing and respect that way and then have conversation out in the parking lot uh, I know that's difficult you know but I, I, I thank you for your compliance on that matter um, also I wanted to just on behalf of Pastor Castile um, express his gratitude for yesterday for that drive-by that took place here in the morning um, he was very uh, very moved and, and appreciative and, and again for those who were not knowing what I'm talking about, Pastor Castillo, of course, was ordained and installed here at Faith uh, 10 years ago. So it was a wonderful day for him. And, and again, if you want to give him a call sometime, send him an email. Congratulations. I know he would appreciate that. Um, finally, I just need to share with you uh, that I will be undergoing heart surgery this Wednesday at the University of Hospital. I've been dealing with a number of symptoms for a while and, uh, sorry, <clears throat> try to delay the inevitable, but it's clear that surgery is now necessary. Therefore, I just want to I encourage you to make every effort to support Pastor Castillo and the Board of Elders as they make plans for the Christmas season and for the foreseeable future. I want you to also know Sandy and I appreciate your prayers in advance, um, and uh, we will keep you informed as to my progress. I will be happy to see you when you exit. I'm going to be down by my office door, so you can go by and we'll do a little wave. But um, God bless you. God bless you. Mm -hmm. 